Hi and welcome to this on shape tutorial. Today we're going to look at the rib feature and we're moving on to this second challenge as you can see in the bottom right hand corner. So ribs can be used as you can see in some of the other activities to add detail to design, especially if you're designing products that could be made out of plastic, uh, to either add a detail or to strengthen parts and so on. But you can also use the ribs in castings or designs that are going to be cast to add okay, rigidity or strength to a casting. So what we're going to have a go at is creating this design in the bottom right corner. And we're going to do that from scratch. So we're going to use some simple sketching techniques, extrudes, and then add this rib feature in between these two sort of extrudes or bosses. So as you can see on screen, we've got a number of different tabs. So on the bottom here, we have this overview of the different activities or challenges in relation to the rib. And what we're going to work on, as I said, is this one at the bottom right hand corner. You've also got here a tab to access other resources and tutorials via different platforms, as you can see there. For this okay, tutorial, we've got a drawing. And if we come over here, we've got the model okay that we can uh, reference as well so we can use this turn it around just in case we're unsure about a certain feature so we're going to create this from scratch there is no okay part studio to use in this tutorial we've got to do that ourselves so i'm going to click on the plus and create part studio and that tab will appear at the bottom what i'm going to do is right click on that and rename it tutorial a tutorial and then just click to confirm that so what I've got now is got my reference model I've got my tutorial tab and I've got my drawing so I'm going to you know move between those so if we have a look at the drawing then <clears throat> what we've got to start with okay if we zoom in okay is some of these bosses here so that's created using number of circles so what we're going to do is we'll probably start off here on the origin and we'll create two circles that are 24 and 42 millimeters so we're going to go sketch on here press normal c for circle so 42 and then c for circle or oh, i've got a circle at the top okay and then 24. so that's our first two at the side there and if you've drawn those wrong, remember you can double click on any of these and update the dimensions. We then come back to the drawing and we can see we've created those now. We've got, okay, two over here. So we've got a radius on that one, which is 18, so that's a 36 millimeters and 64. So C for circle again. I'm gonna click on the origin to wake it up and then I'm gonna come across and you can see I've got dotted lines. And I'm going to type in 64 and then C for circle again if we need to. And I'm going to type in the other one. And my brain's just gone and I forgot what size it is. So 36. Okay, always good to have a drawing to reference to. Now, at the moment, these are not fully defined because they're blue. So, what we're going to do is add a D for dimension okay, between those two points. If we have a look at our drawing, that size is 100 millimeters. So double click on that and update it, enter to confirm. So we are now fully defined our sketch, no blue lines anywhere, okay? Because this point, okay, is snapped, okay, to the origin. You can show constraints and turn them on and off like that, and you can hover over any points or sketches and it'll wake up okay and show you any sort of relationships or constraints that you may have added okay so that's the first bit done we're going to press l for line and we're going to draw out a line here like so just going to add another line on the bottom like this now there's another way of doing this i could have drawn the top one first and then used okay the plane to mirror it but we're going to use this technique. So I'm going to go up to here and we're going to start using some of these. So we're going to go into tangent. I'm going to select the edge of that circle on that one. And you see that we'll go tangent to it. So it sticks to it. And then this one on that one. This one on that one. And then this line again and that one there. Okay, so that's a very quick way of uh, doing that. And then we don't have to do this, but 
okay it's just another tool to use we can trim and tidy up okay these lines here in other CAD programs you would have to definitely have to do that okay to tidy up your sketch but in on shape you don't have to but it's just a nice of a little okay tool to use so we've got that basic drawing now and what we've got to do we've got a, a little sort of cut out here so I'm just going to draw okay a let's have a look we'll go for a corner because we can always dimension it so type that in there go back to the drawing and we've got a, a bit of a call out here to look at the dimensions there so what we've got is 12 millimeters okay in height okay off the center which obviously was six millimeters and then four millimeters out so we're just going to use that drawing and we're going to click D for dimension okay dimension at 12 okay and I'm going to dimension either the top or the bottom okay to that line okay six and what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to use the trim this time I'm going to trim okay these away and then I can do that one as well and I'm going to use a D okay to dimension that four millimeters so again we've got no blue lines which is important if you've got any blue lines okay they're not defined so therefore you haven't accurately drawn those so that should be it so let's have a look at the drawing okay press F for fit and we'll look at this so yeah we've got these drawings got the sides done okay we're not drawing in okay the actual rib at the moment we'll do that later all right so that's what we've got so we're going to go back to the tutorial tab we're going to go up to extrude and you see it's already selected everything now there's different ways of doing this um if we go to the drawing okay we could extrude just the sort of bosses either side and then we could do the middle bit we could do all of it and then add to it there's a lot of different ways you could build up the sizes but if you have a look at the dimensions this shorter one is 24 millimeters in height and the second one is 36 in height so i'm going to actually deselect that and i'm going to select this one and i'm sure it said 36 like I say my memory is okay not great that would turn that off it's going to turn it back on Go for extrude again, and I'm sure I said that was 24, and we could check that in a second. And all I've done there to start with is just added new. So at the moment, what we've got is two separate parts, but when I extrude this, we'll merge them all together. So if I just turn that around so you can see what I've got, uh, let's turn these planes off. They can't get a little bit annoying. There you go. So what we're going to do now is extrude okay, this bit in here. Uh, what we're going to go for is okay 12 millimeters so 12 millimeters and that can also be worked out okay from we'll give some of the other sizes we get 12 mil okay so 12 mil confirm that now at the moment that's creating a new okay part here if i click add okay and say merge with all that would then merge with both of those okay if i don't click with merge with all it would then say well what do you want to merge it with do you want to merge it with that one just that one or do you want to merge it with that one as well okay and of course we could go merge with all one part and we've got one part now what we could do now is turn off that sketch and we've got our main okay body of our design so what i'm going to do now is add the rib to add sort of a feature and strengthen okay these two bosses so if they were being used in a okay uh, a design or model there might be quite a lot of strain on these and if we put this okay rib between them that will okay reduce that so we're going to create this by turning on the front work plane so that front work plane is running down the middle that's why it's important it just saves you time when you're doing your drawings always try to use the origin okay and you get all your sketches in the middle it just saves you time you can create extra planes but that's more work we don't want more work so if click on sketch on here so what we're going to use now is a tool that we've used before we're going to click intersect and again there's different ways of doing this but we're going to intersect that and we're going to intersect that so that what that does it looks at that plane which we're sketching on looks at those bosses and it creates a sketch as you can see 
So I'm just going to click escape off that. I'm going to hide this actually and I'm going to flatten this and I'm going to turn all of these okay into construction like so. Use those as construction. Technically, if we turn this on, I'm not actually that bothered about these on the outside. Okay, we just leave them there, that's fine. So what we're going to do is draw a line okay, between here. And then I will save that. I've not fully defined that if you see it was still blue, but I'm going to show you how you can just go back in and update it. And we'll check the dimensions shortly. So we're going to go up here and we're going to go to rib. We're going to select okay, that sketch part. That's the part. Now it's actually, guess what I wanted that to do. If you've got this option here, okay, normal, all right, that will not work because I'm basically creating it on this plane here. Okay, so it's wanted to go, okay, sort of left or right of that. I don't want it to do that. Okay, it's not going to do anything. But what I want to do, okay, is click on, okay, parallel and then flip it down. So not up, like that, but down. Okay, I've then got control if I click on here of the size of this and we can check this out Okay, on the drawing. So what that is doing is it's creating an 8mm, 4mm either side of the sketch. It merges uh, selected so it's going to merge into the part. If I don't do that you'll see another separate part appears. You might want that for some reason but most of the time we want that on Okay, uh, merge. I've drawn a full sketch so there's no need for me to click on this okay you will see that in other tutorials where that comes in handy but i don't need that and i'm going to confirm that and but let's have a look what we've got there you go however we do need to define some of that so let's have a look in here right now that line okay is from this face is 23 millimeters and we've got 10.85 so that's the first thing. Go back into the sketch. Okay, dimension that one. And I honestly, my brain today is just not working. So let's go back in and check that. Okay. Let's go back in. So some, it's good that sometimes, okay, if you forget, go back into the drawing to so 23, 10.85. Oh, it was, and then 23, there you go, so I did remember. So I've dimensioned those from, okay, that surface there, and confirm that. So height-wise, okay, that's in the correct position. However, if we go to the drawing, okay, let's have a look. Okay, what we do need to do is add the thickness. Now, what I've noticed and this is why you should always get your joins approved and checked is I haven't added the size of that. So I'm going to put that in now. And when you check, you'll see, actually, I'll put it on this view here. Okay, there you go, it's 10 millimeters. So I didn't miss that off. Always check your drawings. So 10 millimeters. So what I'm going to do now is just go back to this rib and update that. Okay. Thanks for watching and if you found this content helpful please click like and subscribe and also check out any other resources and videos created using the links in the description. I will see you on the next one.